President Biden has used a visit to Massachusetts to issue the latest stark warning on the threat posed by climate change. The U.S. president is using executive powers to usher in measures including offshore wind farms and expanded flood control. With a heat dome now affecting 28 states, the U.S. is the latest country to swelter with high temperatures. Here's our North America correspondent, Peter Bowes. With searing temperatures across much of America, it feels like a climate emergency. From New York City to Las Vegas, more than 100 million people are living under excessive heat warnings this week. In parts of Texas and Oklahoma, temperatures have topped 46 degrees Celsius. Joe Biden's comments came during a visit to a former coal-fired power plant in Massachusetts, which is now being used as a manufacturing facility for the offshore wind industry. I come here today with a message. As president, I have a responsibility to act with urgency and resolve when our nation faces clear and present danger. And that's what climate change is about. It is literally, not figuratively, a clear and present danger. The health of our citizens and our communities is literally at stake. With the president's special envoy for climate change looking on, Mr. Biden said humanity was facing the gravest of threats. Extreme weather disrupts supply chains, causing delays and shortages for consumers and businesses. Climate change is literally an existential threat to our nation and to the world. Troops, thank you. The president has been under growing pressure to act, but his plans have been derailed by Congress with opposition from Republicans and one prominent member of his own party. In the short term, more than $2 billion is being made available to help communities cope with the extreme heat. There's money to help low-income families get air conditioning units and help dealing with droughts, flooding, hurricanes and tornadoes. But Joe Biden stopped short of formally declaring a national emergency, a move that would have opened up new ways to pay for measures to tackle climate change. Mr. President, you talked a lot about climate being an emergency today. Why not just declare it an emergency? Because I'm running the traps on the totality of the authority I have. I'll make that decision soon. Like so many issues currently challenging the president, from gun control to abortion rights, long-term progress on climate change is mired in congressional politics. Peter Bowes, BBC News. Well, as President Biden was speaking, the wildfires across Europe were still raging. Countries like Spain, Italy and Greece struggling to cope with the successive heat waves in recent weeks. In France's Giron region, 200 square kilometers have been destroyed in the worst fires there in over 50 years. Here's Azad Demoshiri with more. Sorry. I don't know, don't know what we're going to find. It's going to be us. No trees, nothing, no, I don't know. I don't want to think about it. It's the human cost of the fires laid bare. 68-year-old Fernando Jimenez saw his village in central Spain burnt down and his childhood home destroyed. Hundreds of other residents, like him, were rushed to the Spanish Red Cross's temporary housing. And this is happening across the country. Like much of Europe, Spain has had to continue battling wildfires. More than 500 deaths across the country have been linked to the fires so far. World leaders are now at their action stations, trying to contain the situation. Spain's Prime Minister Pedro Sánchez visited a fire monitoring station in Avila. The climate emergency is a reality. I said it the other day in Cáceres, climate change kills people. It's lethal for our ecosystem, for our rich biodiversity, and it poses a challenge for all those people and localities that have such extraordinary importance in the rural environment. It was a message echoed by France's President Macron, who visited Gironde, where temperatures reached 42 degrees Celsius this week. Several European countries and countries that were not experiencing great fires before are living through an acceleration of the direct consequences of climate change. And so all of this will require us to make structural decisions in the coming months for the coming years. While temperatures are cooling in France, 
are the countries aren't so lucky. Italy's firefighters are still under immense pressure as the fires continue to threaten trees and the wildlife around them. In Portugal, helicopters have continued refilling their buckets with water, hoping to save forests and save homes. But in some parts, it's already barren land. An elderly couple burnt to death in this car as they tried to escape the fire. And these daily battles are being fought into the night. These apocalyptic scenes in Greece, north of Athens, show how relentless the wildfires have become and how difficult it is to beat them. Scientists argue until governments cut emissions and cut them fast, these red skies will become all too familiar. Azadeh Mashiri, BBC News. Well, let's speak to the BBC's Guy Hedgeco in Madrid now. Guy, tell us about the situation in Spain. Are fires still burning there? Yes, there are a number of large fires still burning here, mainly across the north of the country. In the northeastern province of Saragossa, a fire which started uh, there uh, earlier this week is still going, and it's very much worrying the authorities. It's burned around 14,000 hectares. Um, the local authorities there want more help from the central government and from neighbouring uh, regions to help them with that. Also in the northwestern region of Galicia, there are a number of fires which have caused uh, hundreds of evacuations there, um, a, a great deal of devastation of the land. Um, near, quite relatively near to where I am here in Madrid, to the west in the Gredos mountain range, there is um, a fire which has started spreading towards the Madrid region. There are concerns because of the, uh, the high winds that that um, is becoming difficult to control. Um, I think we'll find out more about the exact state of that fire and the others later on today. But there are a number of fires still going, although others have been put out over the last day or so. So it's very much a, a mixed picture. And is there a reprieve ahead? What are firefighters hoping might happen? Will the weather uh, perhaps help with uh, changing the direction of the wind and so forth? Well, in terms of the weather, we, we saw that very extreme heat wave last week and into the beginning of this week. Temperatures dropped a bit on Tuesday. They rose again yesterday. We're not seeing the same kind of temperatures uh, that we were seeing you know, last week in the, in the sort of mid-40s. We're not seeing that, but we are seeing uh, a lot of heat once again in the high 30s in many cases, for example, here in Madrid. Um, and the, the wind is really the key issue. That has been a big problem uh, up in Galicia, for example, in the north. I think it's a problem uh, west of Madrid, that fire I mentioned west of Madrid. Um, and that is always a concern for the, uh, for the firefighters. Around 800 members of the military have been deployed uh, around the country to battle these fires. Yesterday, Prime Minister Pedro Sanchez said he was going to double that number of, uh, of military uh, to help keep these fires under control. And just how much damage has been done so far? Because thousands have had to, to flee their homes. Yes, and we've got thousands of people evacuated still. Um, in total, we're told that around 70,000 hectares have been burned so far this year. That is unusually high. Um, and that's you know, it's much higher than, than what we saw last year. It's, so far, we're looking at the biggest uh, or, or the worst year for forest fires in at least 15 years. But it's still relatively early in the summer, so it's possible that things could get much worse and that more records could be broken in that sense. Well, the hope is certainly that things do not get worse. Guy Hedgeco, thank you very much for joining us from Madrid.